Yvonne Willering joins us, world champion for the Silver Ferns, champion coach for a very long time, and a long, long day after getting up to watch at 2 a.m., and that was a third and fourth place playoff, then 4 a.m. for the netball final. So thank you so much for joining us, Yvonne. It has been a very long day for you, hasn't it? Mm, yeah, it has, and it's, yeah, it's had mixed emotions to it as well, actually. Were the Aussies the best team in the world again? Yep. Absolutely. I really actually enjoyed the final game. And you have a look, look like when they had the loss against England uh, by one goal in, in uh, the second round of the competition, you could see they are wounded Australian, man. They're going to come back strong. And they certainly did that. But the final wasn't what you'd call a typical final because actually both teams really played with depth. Like they let the ball go on attack. They took long shots and certainly there were intercepts to be taken as well. Very heavy penalty count. But that's also to be expected. But, um, yeah, what I liked about um, Australia, though, um, rather than just sort of subbing an individual, they had what you'd call set uh, groups of players, um, set combinations. Like, initially they started in the shooting circle with Conan and Wood, and that's a very experienced pairing. They play in lightning together, so they know each other well. Australia was doing pretty well, and then suddenly you get the switch, and Garvin and Austin take the court, and they just carried on where Conan and Wood left off. And uh, certainly, you know that you could see they were there for business, and they were there to win the competition. Were they more impressive in the final, or or, or against Jamaica in the semi-final? They were more impressive in the final. Um, and you could say totally different team, which it was. Uh, I think they were more under pressure against um, Jamaica because there was almost a situation that we're going, oh, no, New Zealand could be meeting up with Australia. You know, so, um, yeah, you had a situation that they, they had to take that task. But, no, I, I certainly the, the final was where they really excelled. And I guess some of the players, they've been there, done that before, and um, they just they just played the game. And they didn't treat it like it was a final, that it was a big gold medal match. They just went out there to show just how good they were, and probably more so as a collective unit because everyone certainly did their job at hand. And Bruce, at, uh, you know, Bruce, the goalkeeper, she's been getting a bit of flack lately, and, uh, you know, umpires have been really heavy on her. But she came out and she got some really nice tips and intercepts and actually they voted her she became defender of the tournament which was you know which yeah was very worthy actually um the shooter was Halsby and certainly the midcourt player was Kate Heffernan so that's nice to see anyway that at least we've had some recognition. Yvonne Willering is with us world champion player champion coach for the Silver Ferns It was fourth a good reflection in the end or a fair reflection on where the Silver Ferns were at at this tournament? See, now I have to be honest here and say, yeah, it probably was if you saw the way that the games were were panning out. Um, And, and, you know, the the first four games, they were always going to be, well, relatively easy games. And then I I heard Dame Nolan Tarua say, you know, we still haven't got a settled, she calls it a spine, but it's a set combination there. And she was using those earlier rounds to determine that. But those games were totally different than that the the next year when we played the South Africans and the Jamaicans. You know, it was a totally different setup. And so, uh, really, yet the Ferns never had what you'd call a stable lineup um, in the situation. And there was always that that second half, or particularly that last quarter, collapse. They talked about it after every game, but the corrections were never made. And when you saw that after the second game, you, you're thinking, what? going on here, you know, and on attack. I thought defensively they did quite well, I think because of their space marking, they managed to get intercepts. Um, But attacking play, um, that was disappointing in the fact that I know the midcourt players are being blamed, but it's really hard to feed an in-circle combination that is quite static. And when we had Wilson and Ignacio in there, they did a lot of short, what I call, interplay passes. They bodied up on the defender, and it actually made it really difficult for those mid-court players to, to, to feed them. And you could tell that, because Selby Ricketts came on, on onto the court for, for a quarter, I think, and I thought she made quite a difference, and she opened up the circle. But, you know, there was lots of changes made, and and uh, I guess um, there was no stability uh, and no one combination actually uh, took to the task at hand. 
Look, it's just it's, it's been a difficult tournament. I got to admit to to kind of to, to to be involved with because there's so much other sport going on at the moment. <laughs> I the, know. In the middle of the night as well. So you know to 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 brave this and to be up for two a.m. and four a.m. as you were. <laughs> I mean, you know that. Uh, thank you so much for for your for your time. We've got four teams now in World Netball, haven't we? Who are absolutely competitive. Is this the first time you've seen where you could pretty much throw a blanket over all four? Absolutely. And what's interesting, uh, pre-world champs, and I'm even guilty of this one, when we predicted as to who was going to be in the final, who was going to be in the top, it, no one, I don't believe anyone expected it to be an England Australian final and I definitely had Jamaica up there so you know for world netball absolutely this is great because we used to always have an Australian New Zealand final so now suddenly there's a bit more respect for us for other countries involved for Jamaica obviously and England as well to be involved in this whole setup and it was interesting after the final game was played and obviously um, you know Australia were beside themselves and rightly so they've had limited preparation time one, because of Suncorp, and they've had issues as well. You know, so th for them to come out the way they did, playing the game they did, because they won, what, 61-45, um, you know, they were aesthetic. But if you look at the uh, England bench, you actually would think that they had won the gold medal because they also were just wrapped because that's the first time they had ever been in a grand final and what an experience that was for them. So hopefully from then everyone learns from it. Although having said that, appreciate there's going to be retirement of players and that always happens after world championships. Even in the Silver Ferns team, there'll be some retirement. So it's like the start, of a new start for the new campaign. But I like to think that all these teams learn from this and continue in their growth of their nipple, not just at the athletic level but also at the tier further down to bring these players through but uh, absolutely brilliant for world netball thank you so much yvonne willering wrapping up the world netball champs for us minute a weekend highlights people for you you're on the platform